Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Valentine's Day. And we have um, we have the uh, uh, Dublin Abbey with us, uh, Emma Elder, and oh boy, I'm going to mess up his name, but Patrick o O'Donnan. Patrick O'Donnan, yeah. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> all right. And I want to welcome you all here today on this lovely day. So I do have an announcement to make from our sponsor, Luscious Moss Studio. It is owned and operated by Chad Christ out of Edgewood, Washington. And he uh, basically, um, his, his studio is set up for, for drummer record, drums recording, uh, drummers who record, and guitarists. But he does other things, and he's, um, that, he's worked with me there as well. But uh, with that, I want to say that if you uh, are looking for somebody to help you with your music and record it, do contact Chad Quist at Luscious Moss Studio. You can find it by typing in search on Facebook. With that being said, let's go live. And I can't wait <laughs> to, to get um, your background on music. And uh, who wants to start first at this point? Emma's, Emma's raring to go. Just throw me right. out there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emma, and um, I've had a long history of music. It started in dance, and all the while growing up, I've been in schools and performances here and there. And um, Dublin Abbey is my first real band. Yay. I'm also a session artist. Um, there's a lot of session music. It's Irish traditional. They play jigs and reels and hornpipes and you know waltzes occasionally. They're in the pubs all around the area, starting to open up again, which is nice. Mm -hmm. yes. And they're worldwide. And most of the songs come right out of Ireland. And I guess that's it in a nutshell. I play the so, flute, whistle, and some mandolin. I sing and songwrite with Patrick. Okay, so I missed something there. I got the flute. Because I, I, I did that in my sixth grade band. Uh, and we went to parades in my little town, 5,000 people. <laughs> but that's my starting instrument, too. And then you said mandolin. Oh, I don't play the mandolin, but I know what it is. And so what was the middle thing? There was another instrument in there I missed. Oh, so I started on the piano like probably every kid on my oh, block. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then guitar. And whistle. Tim and whistle. whistle. So you, so and you play the guitar? And you whistle? Well, I write with the guitar. I wouldn't call it playing, even though it's... And, but <laughs> the ukulele, I could probably play a lot better than the guitar because of my size. Right. But yeah. the whistle is just like the flute. Yeah. So when she says whistle, it's not like a referee whistle, but... Okay, that's what a, I was it's thinking. A, whistle with your... It's an Irish tin whistle. No, it's a tin whistle. It looks uh, oh. like a flute. Yeah. It's yeah, played straight nice. down. Although I do have one, the Clarks, I, for fun in sessions, sometimes play like a transverse flute, and which gets giggles. But oh, that's cool. Maybe yeah. after a Guinness, I'll try that. <laughs> now, if I understand correctly, there's some kind, I don't know what it's called, but I've, I've always enjoyed watching what I thought were cloggers. I mean, we call them, I call them cloggers, but I don't know what they are. Uh, is that something you do as well? Or? Well, I've done some Shano's dancing. And I learned um, some actually at Irish Music Week was probably my first taste with Marianne. And also um, Emma O'Sullivan, I took her classes. She um, had a bunch of Zoom NOS lessons, Zoom uh -huh. NOS, which was cute. She and her team, um, I guess, term that. But it's old style, Sean NOS, old style. There's old style singing. There's old style song, which is very... There's no real exact meter to it, but it's more storytelling. And same with the dance, um, mm -hmm. mostly to jigs and reels. I guess it's no, it's nothing like river dance. Most people think when they think of Irish dancing or or things that you're talking about, they're thinking about that. But it's more, I guess, earthy, right? Earthy. Uh, whereas there's a lot more ballon. There's a lot more height. There's a lot more jump. There's a lot more glitz where shanos is built for everybody ah, i see well, it's more i guess oh. lyrical um where it has a lot more story and history to it right but got it well if you, if you go to our shows every once in a while you'll see emma break into a bit of dance no go ahead so, yeah, yeah. If, you, 
if you attend one, you'd see that she breaks into uh, she'll break into dance every once in a while. So. Oh, I, I can't wait to the third part of this so that I can find out where you guys are playing. I would like to catch you out. So at this point, is you're on, Patrick, as far okay. as your musical background. I was also going to give uh, Emma one more prop, too, in that she does. She always plays this down, but. Uh, she was a uh, when she was younger. She was a ballerina as well, oh. and so that was a big part of her life. Um, mm -hmm. As for myself, um, you know, I, I did the standard uh, going through high school, playing in jazz bands and all that. And um, then uh, when I got out of out of uh, secondary school, I ended up in a rock band and um, huh? band called Green mm -hmm. Ice in the early '80s. And uh, you know, I probably, I, I, we put out a couple EPs, which back in those days, they used to do a 45 RPM four <laughs> song and it looked like an album. It was, you know, it was um, big, like an album, but it, you played it at 45 RPM and it had four songs on it. Um, <laughs> we did a couple of them and um, I had a great uh, friend named Rick Bangan that uh, we co-wrote and sang everything and um very beatlesque type band we opened uh, we ended up opening for uh, psychedelic furs one time if you remember them band from the 80s but those guys and um no, is so, it? Well, sing that again do you don't do you remember that song no Love no I, I, my way it's a new rule Yes, I, I follow yeah. where my mind goes. Um, so yeah, we we opened for them one time in Pennsylvania. Were, were, you, were you in the United States? I mean, notice an accent. So, um, is this happening here in the United States? Ben? Yeah, this was in the this was back in Pennsylvania. So oh, okay, um, I'm a, I'm actually born here in the U.S. Oh, okay. And, okay. Um, so I spent some time uh, in Ireland back in the '80s and uh, and more recently, but. Um, Right. But I'm uh, I'm born here. I'm an American citizen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I don't. <clears throat> the thing is, I was into to folk, and that's I think that one of the reasons that I'm I'm attracted to your music is I was a uh, into folk because rock to me was pretty disturbing <laughs> back in the day. I was a young mother with children, and I just couldn't couldn't <laughs> take. That. <laughs> yeah, I think you know what I mean. So. Okay, well, you didn't mention the instruments. So what instrument did you start on? And what do you think about about when, what age group were you in at the time? Uh, for myself, I, you know, I, I actually started when I was uh, early in high school um, or secondary school as a drummer. Um, oh, that yes. was my first instrument. And um, there was a, another drummer in, in the, uh, I wanted to be in jazz band really bad. And there was another <laughs> drummer who was really good and there was just there's no way i'm going to beat this guy out he was just too good and so i they didn't have a bass player so i switched to bass guitar at that point in time okay. and that was my primary mm -hmm. in instrument after that for a long time i think actually being a drummer helped me be a better bassist yes. because they're such oh, a yes. rhythm oriented instrument yes absolutely and, um, sure and uh so for this band, for Dublin Abbey, I was uh, the first generation of this band, which started up in 2017. Um, I was uh, the bassist, and I've only been sort of forced to switch to guitar um, in since the pandemic, and we went oh. through. This we went yeah. through a dismantling and a rebuilding and I've always, I've been able to play guitar all along, but I never really saw that as my primary instrument, but yeah. I'm having to play it now. So. Oh, that's amazing yeah. that you, yeah, that's amazing. It took, it's taken me years and I'm still, uh, I, I'm still not at a level I'd like to be. I'm a rhythm player and I just. Oh, I but just, whoever, whoever is right. I mean, we're always, <laughs> always striving to get better so i guess yeah mm -hmm. so moving along from that um when you when you were in the bands the rock bands when when did that end or how how is it that you moved from rock into the irish area the ah, music well you know today? i was telling you about that i was uh, that a co-songwriter singer back then um and we had a very Lennon-McCartney thing going on with our, our writing and our singing. 
and um, that that band broke up in I don't know maybe '86, and then there was a big hiatus for a while, and then we ended up back together again and under a new name, and we recorded some more, and then eventually that broke up, and we ended up getting together again, me and uh, this guy named Rick Mangan, and we decided, hey, let's throw together an Irish thing. And huh. no, so it, that's how long that's ago where, was that? Yeah, that's where Dublin Abbey came from. And uh, the initial name for this project was uh, Black Rose, oh, uh, was I the like original that. band name. And then yeah. about a, maybe six months, a year into it, we switched uh, mm -hmm. it to, over to Dublin Abbey. Yeah. Oh. Now, I don't know much about Dublin and Abbey, but the only thing that, that comes to mind is a uh, is picture on, online about a big building that looked like a, a abbey. I don't know. Is that is it a town? It's a town, right? Yeah, actually. Dublin. Well, Dub, Dublin's a town. Dublin's the capital city of the Republic of Ireland. Oh. Um, but but there's actually no abbey in Dublin. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> so the name the name's a bit of a play. Um, and there's there's literally no there's churches there's cathedrals in Dublin but there's no abbeys um, oh. there's there's abbeys all over Ireland just none in Dublin there is an abbey theater in Dublin which is a theater where a lot of big acts play a lot of theater a lot of uh, classic mu classical music stuff like that could that be what I'm seeing does it look like an abbey no it looks like a big theater so oh. yeah. I don't know but there I are plenty. There are plenty of abbeys in Ireland, um, like old rustic ruins and things like that. So that's probably yeah. what you've seen. I wish I would have gotten to see some of that. I flew over Ireland from uh, from London and and to going to Frankfurt, Germany, and uh, all I saw was green. <laughs> that's the only oh, yeah. no. I have the That's country. an absolutely gorgeous place, um, yeah. and. You know, definitely a place to visit. Um, so hopefully mm -hmm. the Irish Maybe tourism someday. industry will give me my money now. <laughs> do, you, are, do you guys, be, well, you probably were getting together just before COVID, right? So did you have any plans? Uh, the, um, and how many people are in your band? I don't even know. I'm talking about this. Uh, yeah, we, um, Emma, go ahead. Well, uh, COVID kind of hit, so we had to retool some things. Mm. Yeah. Um, so now we have, of course, us, and we have a guitarist and a drummer, and um, Joey and TJ or Taj is what we affectionately <laughs> call him because we had a violinist with a very similar name oh. um, before COVID. So, okay. to make so sure how that many is that all together? I'm trying to call my fingers. Four. Yeah, four. we currently have four. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we yeah, have like some secret band or, you know, like when Taj can't come. Yeah. Sometimes we'll have musicians step in occasionally. So, um, Elias. I, Emma and I are, are the sort of the nucleus of this band. And uh -huh. then the other individuals, um, pretty much come in and play with us and, uh, provide some of the musical filling out of the materials. Right. Exactly. Everyone we all has their unique gift that they bring. <laughs> yeah. I get it. So as you you progressed, um, Patrick, into this uh, Irish music area, where did you come in at that point, um, Emma? Where, was that you with them from the very beginning or did you join them later? Or I joined them um, later. They were Dublin Abbey by the time that I joined them. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, did they interview you or how did you get they to They did. Be they did. Oh, and they were, it, was, it was quite grueling. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was in a dual interview, actually, with a drummer. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had drew, we had interviewed. We were actually looking for a drummer. And ah. Emma, Emma answered the ad, and she's not a drummer. But <laughs> um, she sent me some recordings of her, of her voice and such. And uh, I found it really intriguing, so we brought her. And, uh, yeah, she was an instant fit. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, hopefully by now the people that um, have been watching all of the publications at, at this point, they know a little bit about the kinds of music you play and so forth. And uh, right now, 
there's not a whole, oh, wait a minute. It says somebody, can you identify yourself? Please, please identify yourself. Um, the, they said Dublin Abbey are great. Thanks for interviewing them. No idea who that is. They haven't identified themselves. Yeah, identify yourself because you just won a, won a free out, a CD right. that we'll send to you. So uh, <laughs> let us know who you are. If not okay. here, uh, message us on our, our Facebook site and let us know. But it'd be great if you let us know here. Oh, well, they said President Biden. <laughs> it's President Biden. Yes. So, yeah, that's great. Well, you know. Um, Just to the White House. <laughs> Kim Kim Jong Un follows our site too, so I guess it's possible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. not kidding about that. We actually got a like by Kim Jong Un and Imelda Marcos. Oh. So really strange. <laughs> really? Yeah. How interesting! I wonder. The I, story I'm kind of thinking that. it's probably not really them, but uh, yeah. we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Well, President Biden, I'm glad you joined us. <laughs> well, they're, they're trying to show something here. Hold on a minute. Oh, I know who this is. This is Raymond Hayden. He's, um, I don't know if you've ever listened to Grieve this. the astronaut. Yes. Yes, I know who, yes. he, knew who he is. Yeah. So, Raymond, you're going to have to send your address to get that. She did say he was coming today, and he's as good as his word. There he is, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> and he said, sign, please. And I believe that you guys had something to say about signing that. Here, I'm yeah, going to get out of here so you guys just going to show them that for a minute. There it is right there. It's Emma's. Both of us signed it, but it's really Emma's signature that's worth the money here. So What? <laughs> Somebody said, holy crap, they know it's awesome. No, I don't know what the heck that's all about. But, um, oh, Raymond's saying that. Okay, sorry, Ray. <laughs> so he he's amazed that you know him. Grieve the astronauts. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So now, if I get this straight, you, you both have um, very f uh, interesting and and uh musical talent that you've developed through the years and then you found each other and i believe this is what about 2017 that you came on board emma that's about right uh like 2000 wait was it late 16 early 17 early 19 i think 19? is when emma came on board yeah okay so early 2019 so and she played one. with us for a while before the pandemic really uh -huh. broke loose yeah so how did that <laughs> yes yeah, speaking uh, of yes <laughs> how did that all change everything or did it or or did you at that point just say um we're gonna have to deal with this and just continued and trudged on in whatever way was available to you well we managed to get one of we hold on to one of our saint patrick's gigs but that was uh, the last time yeah, that we that made March. us our yeah. old our old group, you know, um, I think a violinist was playing in a, in a bluegrass band. So he went with that. And then Rick wanted to start a solo career. So he went with that. And then our drummer went with that. Yeah, he <laughs> did his own thing. And then basically, yeah, the, the pandemic, we played our last show uh, during the Pat St. Patrick's Day uh, weekend or week of 2020 and uh pretty much the band with the exception of em and i broke up after that and uh it was in some ways it was it was good for us because we really restructured ourselves and before the pandemic we were sort of a pub uh irish pub band <laughs> okay. and after the pandemic kicked in we really switched to being much more of a folk rock band mm -hmm. and focusing on a lot wider field mm -hmm. with our stuff and our songwriting. Yeah. So the our topics, mm -hmm. even though we sing still a lot about Ireland, our topics are much wider um, now than they were back then. Um, can you, can you kind of describe that? I, I, um, I have so no pub band. So pub band, how would you describe a pub band? Like, you know, whiskey in a jar, all the tunes that people in this country 
expect to hear, right? Ah. So mm -hmm. on St. Patrick's Day, you have your staples, songs with, with Molly in it. <laughs> we joke about that because there are like 20 Molly songs. I mean, that girl cut a swath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know the typical stuff that you think of when you when you think of Irish music and so now we have a lot more folk rock influence and I mean we even have some Spanish flavors in there yeah and yeah. some Russian flavors in there so um I guess true to our country we're kind of like a melting pot of all those things and also you can feel or hear some of the influence of the Irish traditional I guess embellishments you would call them in our music as well. The storytelling, a lot right. of that, a lot more of it. What you know, the pandemic allowed us to to really focus on our songwriting and yes, to to a, a level of insanity almost because yeah. we <laughs> what we, else are you gonna do? You know? I mean, if you wa if you watch our Facebook site, you see that we put out um, new music videos literally weekly. These wow. are, we are literally writing new songs every week. And now you um, write just the two of you or just one, each one, or how do you? Uh, sometimes you... we write together. Sometimes we write individually. So um, it just depends, but we are just, uh, we have, we have a unique problem in that we have so many originals right now. We're, we're getting ready to put a new album out. And right. we our our originals are fighting with each other over which one gets you know which get to be on the album because we just have so we it's have like a just set a, list yeah we have probably <laughs> uh, you know forty five originals right now that are oh fine to be on an album so if you want to do a cover we're like it'd be fun to do a cover you know like set list how many times do you redo your set yeah. list mm -hmm. we did we did the set list and we're like oh but then we're gonna have to jettison one one of our songs what are we gonna jettison. Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> it starts all over. <laughs> yeah. Well, do I have a question? Um, I don't know if you've been to Ireland or not, Emma, but um, do they really drink green beer over there too? I no. <laughs> that Patrick said no. No, that's a very American thing. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone would look at you funny over there. There's a few few tips when you go to Ireland, yeah. right? You yeah. don't, don't want to say some things. Yeah, don't order Irish car oh. bombs. That's not cool over there. What? Don't um, use the peace sign. They don't like do. Irish car so car bombs. They don't like the terms black and tans for drinks. Okay. Um, <laughs> people don't drink and people don't drink green beer. Uh, and yeah. people don't drink and whatever beer. you do, don't leave the fanny pack at home. Don't say that. <laughs> Emma's just giving you some terms that in <laughs> Ireland mean different things than they do here. So <laughs> read up before you go, people. Emma's got <laughs> family from Ireland, right? Yeah. No, the elders please. are in Valley Money and um, our family historians are still there. My uncle was really, he was the family historian. He had our family back 900 years. Wow. wow. So he yeah. went back there recently with my aunt. They call each other Bobcat. And um, <laughs> they're the latest, I guess, in, in adding the history to that tree. It's amazing. Um, my, my grandfather came from Austria and I got a chance to go to Europe I went to, um, like I was saying earlier, Germany. Just such amazing difference between countries, and mm -hmm. and over there compared to the states, it's it's just like very very different. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved, I loved all the history and and the fact that all of that history is right there, in the mm -hmm. countries. So, um, older than our country. <laughs> Funny. Oh, what's that? Older than the United States. Oh, much older. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I would imagine Germany is a lot like Ireland, but in, in Ireland, for example, you'll be driving through these small towns and there will just in the backyard of somebody's home, there's a, you know, there's the ruins of a castle yeah. and um, or an old or an old abbey. So yes. literally the history is everywhere there. Uh, I, I, I too bad I had to fly over. I couldn't stop over, but the, the, the times were pretty ugly at that time. So, yeah. um, 
we my my husband at the time was uh, an American soldier and so I was going over there to study and uh, I, I found things there that I didn't like but mostly I found things I liked <laughs> so, yeah, sure. and the ruins were one of them they're amazing in Germany mm -hmm. I don't know if they do it in Ireland but they light up their old castles at night and yeah so Ireland think, does that too yeah does it oh something else so we do have another um we do have another person who commented and says molly mcguire and lighting benjamin are my fave ah oh nice yeah, yeah i think exclamation exclamation <laughs> both ah. those songs yeah molly mcguire is about um uh an early miners labor uh, union that existed with irish miners in america west mm. virginia pennsylvania areas and uh the mines brought in hired thugs to because these guys were working impossible hours. They were working uh, impossible hours for very little pay. And so they started striking and uh, the company brought in thugs to try and get them back into shape. These guys fought back. They ended up hanging dozens of them. Uh, so that's what the song Molly Maguire is about. And then, uh, the other song was uh, Lightning, Lightning Benjamin. Benjamin. Lightning Benjamin's about uh, Benjamin Franklin visiting Ireland. <laughs> oh, and, really? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, when he was the when he when he was the ambassador to, ambassador to England before the revolution, before the American Revolution, mm -hmm. and he visited Ireland and he was so aghast at how the British Empire was treating uh, the conditions the Irish citizens were living in that it actually firmed up his stance that America needed to have a revolution to prevent that them from becoming that. Yeah. So Ireland actually played a part in the American yeah. revolution, which. Interesting. Uh, I had a thought there and it just, boy, that just blew my mind. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, is it music time then while we have our thoughts? Almost, but I have to make a comment about this uh, this thing. I, I stayed in, uh, uh, for two years, I worked at the company, a French company in uh, West Virginia and got to know that whole coal miner history. And um, hmm. and I visited a few stills, wow. <laughs> saw what moonshine is. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, um, yeah I, I understand. I'm going to have to listen to that song because I want to hear that. <laughs> and it says, "Oh my, three guys should play. Three guys should play in school as history lesson and get paid." Oh, I'm not sure what they mean by three guys. Uh, can you clarify that statement out there, please, listener? I uh, maybe it's autocorrect for you guys. Guys, these guys should play. I speak funky autocorrect. <laughs> yeah, I can't read. <laughs> And these and it just corrected it to these guys should play in schools um in for history lessons and i, I think oh. um, your songs definitely reflect some history and i agree um when when i was younger i you know all my all my compatriots all my schoolmates used to listen to van halen or acdc or whatever and i was off listening to al stewart i don't know if you remember him but no. He did a lot of history-based songs, and it just lit my interest in history on fire. So subsequently, I end up writing about that a lot. And um, and uh, Emma and I write quite a few historic songs. So, yeah, there's a lot of history in our music. All right. Well, I'm going to be a fan and following you for sure. Oh, thank <laughs> so you. Great. Thanks. This is time for your music. Now, I've been waiting for this, and I knew that I didn't know you were going to do it like this. Um, I tried to figure out the system so I could play one of your videos, but this is so much better. So I'm going to leave it to you, too. I'm going to get off the site while you do this. Have a capo? And we're looking for a capo. I found it. Oh. Oh, I got one. I can't give it to you. <laughs> Can you hand us one, too? Yeah. yeah. Thank <laughs> you. All right. See if this we This one... Uh, this particular song's called uh, Somewhere in Antrim. Antrim is a, an area, a county, up in uh, the north of Ireland. Some people call that Northern Ireland, but uh, we call it the north of Ireland. Just cut down Gary. 
creature Two ever streets ago The wheels bouncing up Up off the cobblestones And I can't help but feel I'm coming home Around the roundabout Down by the riverside That's where she's waits for me And where we're going wild I can't help but feel I'm coming home Just cut down Gary Duff to where the streets are go. The future's looking up just when I see my girl and I can't help but feel I'm coming home. And I can't help but feel I'm coming home. Bravo. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, I loved it. That just does something inside. I liked it. All right. Oh, thank you. Um, so after you formed the band in COVID, did you have any gigs? Uh, and, and you know, this, I, I just, before I ask that question, I want you to know that most of the people work that uh, not most but a lot of the people work they're they're at this time of day so they don't they don't post and they don't necessarily come in at that moment to see us live some do some don't but they it gets posted on facebook after we're through so that there's going to be people hearing this and then two weeks anywhere from a week to two weeks later depending upon how long i think it should be out there uh, i post on youtube so they will be able to see the interview on YouTube. And I've been getting some feedback that people are watching those on YouTube. So Great. they'll be able to hear that music. It was lovely. Thank you. Great. So what I was going to ask about was whether you had any um, gigs or the two of you performed at all during COVID. And Yeah, we, um, we played a number of shows. Obviously, they've been pretty sparse because of the, the shutdowns and such. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm trying to think of what we played. We just uh, played at the winery. We played, yeah, we just played a show up in Woodenville. Uh, just oh yeah, which to, one? Um, which up winery? at uh, Village Wines yes. in Woodenville. Yeah, and, I live in uh, Redmond, not far from there, six miles. And we played a place down in, a couple places down in Tacoma mm -hmm. um, not too long ago. The Pint and Pie? I can yeah. never get this one, Pint and <laughs> Pie. Pint and Pie. I don't know about that yeah, one. Yeah, and O'Malley's, which is uh, down in Tacoma as well. And that's that's kind of your, uh, well, it's an Irish pub. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's another We've been there one. A few times. There's, there was an Irish pub. I think it's still there called Finnity's um, up in North Bend. Finnity's. And they. Oh. Finnegan's. Is yeah. Finnegan's? No, no, no. Um, yeah. Yeah, Finna the, yeah the, they actually, we uh, went by there not so long ago and they looked like they were closed, unfortunately. Uh, so. No. I think they. I, I. I hope. I hope it's just temporary. But it looked closed, like the windows are all darkened down, and so yeah, I'm a, a kind of fearful that they were another victim of that uh, pandemic. Oh, darn. Yeah. Well, I used to go there to jam. They used to have mm -hmm. Sundays jam, but I yeah, didn't we, play Irish music. I ate Irish food. <laughs> yeah, we played there <laughs> once. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a great place. Too bad. Oh, darn. So and we have some shows coming up. Yes. Moving on um, to that. What are we going to see in the future? Oh, wait a minute. So somebody said um, S-I-G-I-L-L-O. Siglio? 
Sligo? Sellers? What is it? S-L-I-G-O? S-I-G-I-L-L-O. Siglios? Sellers in uh, Snoqualmish Valley. Uh, are they saying that they would love you guys? So it's oh, S wonderful. S I G I L L O. We always Sell like people that love us. So. Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a tip there. I would definitely check them out as well. Sounds There's good. There's a lot going. I mean, I know you guys. I'm assuming you're in the south uh, of the state, Greater Seattle area. Is that correct, or am I wrong? We're we're actually um, on the east side. So oh, where? Um, we're on the east side. Yeah, over in the Bothell area. Oh, okay, so I live in Redmond, so I know about this area. Not but far away. Not far away. No, and there's a there's a town. I don't know if you guys have been there yet, called Snoqualmie. Mm -hmm. Snohomie, sorry. Oh, Snohomie. Snohomie. Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, they they have music all the time there and that'd be another place there's some wineries there as well mm -hmm. and uh that is a definitely a place to to look into it's got a lot sure. of music all through covid it had music um they they did it outside so that mm -hmm. people weren't you know too badly uh, uh, exposed depending and on the, oh i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead patrick go depending ahead. on the venue too uh, sometimes we bring the whole band along. Sometimes it's, if it's a smaller right. venue, it's right. just M and I. So yeah, yeah. So we'll, well play as we'll play as a duet sometimes as well. Well, I can't wait to see you move it around, and I will definitely watch for you by following you. And I would really appreciate if you to post any gigs or records, especially this album coming out on our site, so people can see it. And um, yeah, things look like they're just starting to open again. Uh, yeah. So yeah. we're playing March 4th and 5th, actually, out at um, Ocean Shores at uh, oh, yeah. Um, Galway, Bay. Yeah, Galway Bay, which is, if you've, if you've ever been to the Irish pub out there, Galway Bay. I um, haven't. Oh, it's, it's a delightful place. And they've got, they've got a store. They sell all kinds of Irish mementos and really, really kind of a cool place if you're ever in Ocean Shores to go see that. <laughs> um, so we're well, playing a couple couple days there. And then, uh, of course, on St. Patrick's Day, um, we're playing uh, multiple shows that day uh, down in Tacoma, up in Bellevue. So, Bellevue? Where in yeah. Bellevue? So there's an Irish pub in Bellevue. Um, hmm. uh, trying to get the names it's escaping not, me at the Molly's, moment. It? What? It's not Molly's, it? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, at the, it's at the bottom floor of a high-rise building in Bellevue. Oh. Yeah, so Did first floor. The it's downtown Bellevue? Yeah, we played okay. that. Okay. Yeah, the name's just it escaped me too. Escaped me. <laughs> well, so. post it. Post it. I like I'll to post go. It. I like to go. Oh. I've got we'll so post many. It. <laughs> okay. I have so many places to go. I I never have the energy to keep up with all, <laughs> all of it, but I will try to catch that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Somebody else said, um, have they played Doyle's in Tacoma? Cool Irish bar, Doyle's. D -O -Y -L -E yeah, we haven't been to Doyle's yet. Um, so we played a couple places down in Tacoma, but we haven't been heavily down in that area. We played, though, pubs, uh, particularly before the pandemic, we were playing, uh, you know, everywhere from the Seattle area down into Portland. So um uh, we actually are looking at expanding ourselves further than that this time around. So good, good. Probably, um, if we get our way, the whole what? Well, the whole world. But actually, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but actually, we're looking at probably the West Coast. So okay. Yeah, I we played um, in Portland before. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that Emma? I didn't hear it. We played in Portland before. before oh, really? COVID. Is there an Irish pub there too? There's so many. Yeah. And we're not we're not partial to Irish pubs either. Like I was saying earlier, I think our name's almost a bit of, mis of a misnomer nowadays because we're yeah. really much more of a folk rock band. If if you listen through our the catalog of our material, you'll see that there's just a wide array of topics that mm -hmm. we're singing about these days. Okay. So, so and we I do see. quite a few covers on our live shows that will be anything from oh goodness, um Simon and Garfunkel to yes. Beatles songs to you name it. There's probably, some Led, long. probably some Led Zeppelin in there too. 
I have to ask you, Emma, when the first time you played with these guys um, on a live in a live show, where was it? And were you um, were you a little nervous or in a little stage fright, or did you just walk yeah, that in? Yeah, was the Owl, the Owl and Thistle in Seattle, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. And uh, well, I do have a rather large stage background. Um, I was in the ballet theater from age yeah. four and a half. And then I was in companies. I danced the Nutcracker at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion as one of the um, the children dancers. Um, and also in college, I was in the Wall Street Dance Company and I was an ensemble member, part of the Corpse du Ballet or the body of the ballet. I also nice. did character dancing on their Nutcracker as well as some other things. So I guess I'm fairly used to the theater and it was an easy-ish transition for that. So I think what they all say is true. Once you get started, you're fine. It's just yeah. getting started. No one's thrown anything. So it's not like Joan Jet where you have to duck for batteries being hurled at you. So I gotcha. <laughs> the very first that. time that yeah. I sang after COVID, I was so nervous my mouth went dry. And I've been doing this off and on for 20 years. I mean, I had a band for 15 and then I joined a volunteer band that play, we play in uh, retirement uh, communities at 55 plus communities and nursing homes or facilities or whatever. And uh, yeah, I, I was used to it, but boy, I'll tell you what, I sure was nervous coming back. Yeah, I guess in the theater you have the footlights, so you can't really see the oh, hundreds or yeah. thousands of people out there. But in live music, you can see Everything. a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you dwell on it, I kind of look at the back row because you know they say dance for the balcony. No. So I tried to sing for the people in the back row. I could just kind of blur my eyes if. That that's kind of like a little trick, so you don't get overwhelmed. Oh. By, yeah. I don't know. I think we we I really think he's played for the most people at once, and I have. We really like, enjoy, yes. I think, the whole interaction yes. with with the crowds, and um, but I always think back to Ringo Starr's great line. You know, they asked Ringo in an interview one time, "What you know? Don't you get a little jealous having to sit in the back when the other three guys are out front?" And he said, in his big thick uh, English accent, he said. He said uh, no, you know, sometimes it's a good place to be when they start throwing things. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, true. Yeah, I played in a this place called the Oxford in Snohomish on Thursday, and they were there hard rock. I mean, it, it was hard, <laughs> hard rock stuff. And Led Zeppelin and God knows what else because I don't follow it. But I got up and sang country, and I was sure there'd be a beer bottle, but... <laughs> No, sometimes right. sometimes that's just the thing though right um yeah i was yeah. in it when i was still in high school i was in a talent show and they had all these people doing jazz singing and reunited by peaches and herbs and i got up and sang a uh, grandma's feather bed by oh uh, Jim, john denver, by john yes. denver. <laughs> and i brought the house down Good song so choice. it was just i think it was just the right shot of adrenaline or something that the, that the right. crowd needed at that particular time. You know, I had a guy come up in Duval. I go to the jams on Sunday night from 7 to 11 at the Duval Twin Dragon. And uh, Lynn Sorensen from Bad Company, he was the bass player for Bad Company, if you've ever mm -hmm. heard them. Uh, he, he's there. I play bass. And then uh, Doug, Doug McGrew, who's an area drummer, plays everywhere. And Billy Shu And... Um, that particular night, I think it was Manuel Moraes, but uh, this guy came up to me and he said, you should learn Grandma's Feather Bed. <laughs> He's just, so apparently somebody likes that song somewhere out there. Yeah, we don't cover that song, uh, but every once in a while, if you come to one of our shows, you might hear uh, Country Road. Uh, I love that. it. Yeah. We actually cover that every once in a while. So Yeah, that goes in with your West Virginia theme right. there. So we have another comment and it says an idea. Offer up Zoom performances to homeschool organizations to offer up live music history courses. Just a peripheral income idea. The pandemic yeah. opened up more avenues like this. And that sounds like a really interesting idea. I, I think yeah, you guys are sitting on a gold mine. I think, um, and that's just my opinion. I, 
my opinion among many, but uh, sometimes things like this are really needed, uh, especially during, you know, music is a healer and music and history. Uh, history can become a really interesting subject with something like music backing it. So hopefully um, some of these avenues will open up for you and, and uh, our younger people will get to hear the things that you're saying that probably more European children hear than Americans. Yes, so, that's a good point. Thank you. So when you look back on your career, and we're going to cap it off with uh, some more comments about your album, but um, coming out in the songs that you write. But during your, your experience uh, singing, and, and for you, Emma, you're dancing as well, and you're playing um, your musical instruments, and, and you as well, Patrick. What are some of the outstanding moments that you can think of that were earth-changing, uh, like, oh my goodness, you know, it was just one of those aha moments. Who wants to start first? <laughs> How about Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Patrick, <laughs> you're on the spot. Does it have to be an aha moment? Do I have to sing like Take On Me? Or <laughs> um, <laughs> That's an inside joke for us, the okay. whole aha thing. Sorry. Um, <laughs> she cracked her uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, goodness. Let me rework that question again. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, my, my musical existence, sure, there have been times where it's been, where we've done fun shows. I always used to think back to this time. I was playing a, a rock place up in um, Woodenville one time. And I always joked about this with my bandmates at the time that for 15 seconds, we were the greatest band in the world <laughs> because we were playing away and all of a sudden we fell into the slipstream. And it's like wind concussed my hair. The whole crowd turned and looked. Anyone, you know, way in the back of the of the club that who wasn't watching us suddenly turned and looked. We captured the entire place for 15 seconds. And then it felt like the rudder started shifting and the wheels <laughs> fell off again. And we were back to our old miserable selves. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but for 15 seconds, we own the world. Um, so there's always events like that in music. And um, you know, but I am, I've always been where I'm at, you know, so my favorite time in music is always right now because this is where I live, you know, this is where yes. I'm at. Cool. <laughs> yes. I, well, I think the most recent, I guess, story that, that I can share is when I started dancing and then the audience started dancing. That was at the Owl. Oh. That was, that was when the, um, we had a couple Irish patrons that night. Yeah. And they were and, actually. And when she dancing. says Irish when she says Irish pa patrons, she means people who are actually from Ireland were there. And uh, we have oh, fans. We've, we've played um, on podcasts and radio stations um, here in the U.S., but also in Europe and in Ireland. And we've got a fair number of fans in Ireland, in England, mm -hmm. in Germany, um, France. So, yeah, we um, for some reason, our uh, what we do appeals across borders which is very cool yeah, yeah so cool. when they start paying us big money to go play those places that'd be a lot better <laughs> than when right, now, so. <laughs> right now they're canceling those european tours unfortunately i think oh, aerosmith yeah, had theirs rough. canceled their their concert so uh let's hope things get better so that that comes true Definitely. agreed okay so let's dive a little bit further into your album is there a particular i mean obviously you're sorting through trying to decide which songs did i get you emma did we did we go into what your aha moments were Just oh yeah the, the dancing, uh, was that it? The dancing guess, yeah um was actually teaching people shanos um, oh. we were i think we were playing a couple of our mashup songs and then dj was in a violin solo and um and I continued to dance and the whole audience, like in the front row, <laughs> they started caught, picking up the steps. Yeah, um, it was like she was, yeah. like she was leading was a, a line class. dance, yeah. right? It's like I was yeah, a exactly. Oh, how fun. I would <laughs> love to see that. That must have been a real, real kick. <laughs> yeah, it so, was. yeah, I, I would often uh, put my guitar down and 
go down and line dance with people when we were playing too because yeah, they formed a little line. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> the tables out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, marvelous. So back to my question, I guess. Um, when you were kind of deciding what songs, you, and I guess that process is still going on, what songs you want to keep and what songs you don't. Um, do you have a theme for the album? Have, have you got an idea of of what kind of picture is going to be on the CD or? Well, we have still? Panamera. Yeah, we've developed a rock opera. No, um, <laughs> in reality, <laughs> we've. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we've had a couple of songs that um, we've had fans request um, mm -hmm. to be on upcoming albums. So those mm -hmm. probably got front seat because of that. Yeah. Um, one of them being Connemara, which is just a great yeah. little groove song. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as like a general theme goes, now I think it's just tunes that, you know, there's some tunes we write that, you know, Lennon used to use this term throwaway songs, right? He'd yeah. write a song that he'd call a throwaway song. And of yeah. course, we all loved them. But, you know, he, to him, to him, it was just sort of like, eh. he's like, I can do better. Yeah, I could do better. And we certainly have uh, those that we feel that way about. But we have songs we love, too. And so those tend to force their way onto the album. So, um, like I said, we've got God, we've written so much that um, for us, it's a struggle what not to include at this point in time, which <laughs> yeah, I think from a band's perspective is a good problem to have, you know? <laughs> yeah. How yeah. many songs do you think are going to be on it? Uh, probably 14 on this one. Ooh, yeah. that's, that's a big album. Yeah. yeah. Well, like we said, we have we have a tough time shaving things off. And we have a lot of songs that run in the, you know, we don't write these big, long uh, power songs they're usually about uh you know three and a half minutes two and a half minutes somewhere in there so they tend to be short and sweet yeah, yeah a lot of the irish um flute tunes and fiddle tunes are really short and so they'll string them together in what they call a set oh yeah cool so yeah i like the idea so in the future looking ahead past the present time with COVID. I mean, obviously, people are beginning to say, <clears throat> well, let's open things up. Let's take our masks off. Let's, yeah. And, and in the background is always the writings from people who are involved in, in the research and so forth saying, be careful. You know, we don't know what's out there. There's still more to come. We see it, but we don't know what's going to do. So looking forward, um, in spite of that, uh, what do you see coming up in your future? Or what are you, you know, what goal have you have or have not set for what you're going to do and where you're going to be in the future? First we take Manhattan, next we take Berlin. Um, <laughs> oh, we love Leonard Cohen, right? I mean, what a great writer. Um, so, I, you know, it's my profound hope that we're going to see places really start to open up in the next few months here. Um, it certainly feels that way. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I have, you know, cautious optimism that that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for, for all these bands out there that have managed to hold themselves together and survive yeah. through this process. And there's, you know, M and I, you know, this isn't our primary living per se. Um, so there's bands out there who've just been devastated by this. Yeah. And um, that's really, you know, we hope for everybody's sake that we're all able to get back in the saddle and um, start playing out again, because I mean, we miss not just playing ourselves, but getting to see other people play, which is mm -hmm. always such a joy. It is That's inspiration cool. too. And I think our goals are obviously to play out more, right. And produce albums, put these songs on, on a disc somewhere or MP3 wave. Right. right. And and we're a very visual band too, in that we put we're putting videos out constantly as mm -hmm. well. So, are those all those little boxes on on your website? Are those all songs? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's I good. gotta click on them. So literally, <laughs> ev literally, uh, just about every well, pretty much every single Friday, we're putting out oh, material. Nothing. 
Yeah, and it's usually a new song, so mm -hmm. um, it's like in insane production. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, um, yeah, we do a lot of that. Um, actually, we've got COVID has actually got us both better at remote stuff, like remote video in front of a green mm -hmm. screen, right? I mean, who knew? <laughs> Apparently, Patrick did. So, yeah. so have you stream, are you streaming any of your work like this, like on a on a platform that I have? Do you, do you stream anything like that? Uh, you know that. Where where's well, our music streaming? Our music is our on album. Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, and twenty seven other platforms. <laughs> yeah, so you can find us there on YouTube. We also don't we also have a a, a YouTube channel. Yeah, we have a we YouTube do. channel. Okay. Facebook's our main go-to. Okay. We have a Twitter and a Instagram, but Facebook's our main hub of where we How do I find you? Just Dublin Abbey? I because I yes. I was scared. Just do the at sand anymore. and then Dublin Abbey, all one word. Wait, I think in Facebook what? and all those. What was the, first word? the little ampersand if you're looking for us on on those. Or you can just type in Dublin Abbey on any of your favorite streaming platforms and we'll pop up. There's yeah. not too many bands with our name. Like, it looks like we're the only Dublin yeah. <laughs> Abbey band out there. So, it does. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. When we were the Black Rose, when we first got going, there was about 387 Black Roses out there. Oh, so um, Dublin Abbey, we didn't find another band by that name, which was nice. Right. So. Well, there was some stuff that I was running into that was Dublin Abbey, but I, I'm not sure what it all was. It wasn't your band. I know that. Usually it's usually when you look that up and it comes up on the like Google searches and such, it's usually the, uh, the Abbey theater in Dublin that they're talking. Yeah, about. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what was coming up. So last question. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, cause we're almost out of time here. Darn it. <laughs> These are never long enough, but um there are a lot of, um, a lot of, I've got about 625 listeners, which isn't a lot, but I just started this in July. So <laughs> to me, wow. that's a lot. <laughs> and uh, uh, there are a lot of us that are independent songwriters that are just getting started. I wrote my first album during COVID mm -hmm. and uh, didn't know I could write. Yeah. Probably can't, yeah. but I put them out there. And um, I went through Luscious Moss Studio. Chad Chris produced them for me. Nice. And so what would you, what kind of a, each one of you individually, whoever wants to go first, and I think I'm going to ask Emma first, um, what lesson or what thoughts would you give to people who are just starting out and uh, beginning to put their stuff out there and, and gig and so forth. What, what Do you have any words of wisdom for us and what you'd like to tell us or share? That's a, a big question. Let's, yeah, let's see if I can give a short and sweet answer. I think as long as you write and you keep going, there's going to be things that you might put aside or throw away tunes. There are going to be some... <laughs> things or themes and tunes that pop into your head. There's going to be inspiration absolutely everywhere. Write it down, use your recorder, and you might have a whole song pop together all at once. So I think be open to the inspiration. It can come in anywhere as long as your ear is open and you're receptive to the influences of your own creativity. I think that's where it's at. And, and you know, be comfortable with the learning curve. Like during COVID, I didn't actually beginning COVID, I didn't know really anything about recording. And I had a flash flood course. Thanks Patrick, <laughs> yeah, for sending all those screens, and walking me through all that. That is a steep learning curve. I will say it's a whole different art. So don't be frustrated. If for some reason you have a technical issue, oh. we all do. It's a whole nother craft all together. So mm -hmm. don't let it stop you. Take out your you know phone recorder and record there, you know, get it down. And these pieces will fall into place. And if they don't, you have Luscious Moss Studios. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Yes. Someone who knows. And, you know, don't beat yourself up over it if you can't handle the the engineering side because it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick I makes it look easy. Oh. I know. I had I have to laugh at what you said because, oh, my gosh, the first time I went into the recording studio, I was in there for eight hours. Um, I was crushed. I mean, I came out of there thinking, 
oh my God, am I really that bad? <laughs> no, they have you naked over there. Like your voice oh, naked they and they're like, just yes. be prepared. This is yep. this is the process. I 100% then, agree. I know we all go through that. <laughs> all right, Patrick, guess what? It's your turn. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, you know, from a songwriting standpoint, I'll kind of hit it from there. You know, Emma and I have talked about this. We both do this where we will be driving and a song idea will pop into our head. We'll literally pull over and yeah. grab the nearest napkin and write, be writing lyrics or, or grabbing my phone and recording a melody into it. And those little bits and pieces end up becoming songs. And um, so that creative process is something that is developed. And uh, when you're starting off in this whole thing, you know, things may not feel natural at first, but just, you know, take all those bits and pieces and keep, you know, growing them. Keep uh, that. That's part of the love of what you're doing. You can I do a mashup hard. of your own stuff too. Like, let's say you find a couple snippets, you can weave them together into something that you Absolutely. may not. Have. Yeah. I uh, just to share for, I think the, some of the listeners that might see this later on know this, but Jessica Lynn Whitty is the wife of uh, Raymond Hayden and Greek the Astronauts. And she has this program at five o'clock on Thursdays uh, called her fan club. It's a Jessica Lynn Whitty Rebels, a honky tonk um, bench, honky tonk happy hour. And she asked us to, to send in drinks because she makes drinks. It's a little bar and she makes drinks. And and talks about what's coming up and blah, blah, blah. And I give her this drink. I like Southern Comfort, so I don't drink anymore, but I, I do like it. And I found a recipe for a song, I mean, for a drink called Southern Comfort. And as she was making it, I said, this would make a great song. And sure enough, I wrote it and produced it. <laughs> so well, there you go. Yeah, excellent, there excellent advice, guys. Well, we're a little bit over, about two minutes here. Um, we've been on for one hour and two minutes. I'm sorry I took the extra time, but I do want to That's thank nice. you both. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. pleasure. Very, very much for, for coming on and have a wonderful, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day and happy St. Valentine's Day. Yeah, thank you. And, and we will... Um, I want to thank all my listeners for joining in. These are wonderful people. I will give you all the support I can, and hopefully you'll come back in the future. Good to see you. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Happy Thanks Valentine's Day. Bye. Bye. And that ends today's program. I do want to thank you for tuning in and listening, whether you were live or whether you do it later. This is Joy Ann Lachery, your monitor, signing off for the day. Have a good one. Bye. Well, maybe not.